Hey everybody, Coach here. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes and joining me this week. I'm coming to you from the great state of Texas after their deep freeze exposure that they had a week or two ago. And it hasn't changed a whole bunch. We're in the mountain hill country, but that is not the topic of this week's conversation. What we're gonna talk about uh, today is we're gonna talk how to teach you the basics of landscape design so that you can do it yourself and be accurate enough where you can use it in other ways and other tools. We're basically gonna show you how to make that roadmap, that roadmap to get you from what the hell am I supposed to do to finished product. And that roadmap in between is what I'm gonna help you draw today. Hey, before we get started, I wanna give you just a minutia of disclaimer. Now, before everybody goes, I don't wanna be a designer. I don't know nothing about design. It's okay. All right, but what I want you to impress upon you is I'm not trying to make you a landscape designer. I am trying to make you a DIY homeowner with the capabilities from this learning today to be able to do it yourself without paying hundreds or thousands of dollars. Then you can take that money and put it towards the project itself. We got about a 30 minute journey here, maybe a little less, so let's get started, shall we? Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me Coach Maestro. Wake the hell up, it is time to get going. Hey, I'm Matt, and you can call me Coach. You know, every week I bring to you landscape tips and tricks, landscape design concepts and theories, in an easy to understand format so you can attain the results you want in a landscape project of your own, doing it yourself, get the professional results you want, save a boatload of money, and be a heck of a lot more self-reliant in this day and age. Hey, you know, after a 20 plus year career as a successful landscape designer and contractor, retail nursery manager, and educated, in college in ornamental horticulture, I think I bring to you a lot of knowledge and experience. And I wanna share that knowledge with you, the new modern homeowner of today. So part of this design episode starts with the concept of planning. And planning, guys, before even putting a plant in the ground is far and away more important than any other part of the whole landscape project. Without planning, you end up struggling. You end up going off on uh, DIY tangents. We don't follow a step-by-step -step process, and we end up kind of stubbing our toe here and there, and sometimes costing us a lot more money than you really have to. Uh, can you wrap your head around that one? It is the things I've tried to teach homeowners for the last 15 years, that if you're gonna do it yourself, at least follow this pro's advice, and you know, thousands of other pros to plan it out. Your house was not built without a plan. Your city was not built without a plan. Your car was not built without a plan. So where you live every day and recreate in your backyard with your family, your children, your dog, why wouldn't you want to plan that very important part of your world out correctly? One of the things the design will do, like I told you in the intro, is it's going to create a roadmap for you, a visual roadmap. And not only are you going to look at it, but as you create it, it will, it will cement it in here more than anything else. You know, uh, a lot of ways of teaching and learning, but when people look at something, do something, see something, that, that, that learning behavior is just like a funnel and it just accelerates it into a total understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. After a few decades and then some of doing landscape design, I was really blessed. God gave me a, a talent that uh, I could walk into someone's house, I could walk into your home, sit down at your kitchen table, listen to you, and then be able to go out and do the backyard or the front yard tour and having compared what you told me what you wanted versus what I'm looking at, I knew really early on 
what the finished product was going to look like after that much experience and time had gone by. And it's, it's really a blessing. It makes the job so much more enjoyable. It wasn't a, a torture test for me. It was really enjoyable. It got that left brain thinking, but it was also enjoyable for the client because I was able to impart little tidbits here and there of idea and they would have those aha moments and that was always good for a designer contractor because if I had them on my page satisfying them they knew right away that they probably found the right person for the job so for you maybe you don't have that you know huge left brain activity and that's okay not everybody's like that maybe you're more analytical and right brained and that's good because you are going to use that for your logistical layouts and your uh, budget layouts and your scheduling layouts those things will come in very handy but as far as us veteran designers it was really nice to have that creative left brain to be able to see how to make it work okay so before we get before we get too far into it I want to share with you some tools and I'm going to do that in two ways I'm going to talk about it briefly and then I'm going to cut away to an excerpt from our online course that's coming out later this month called Homescape 1.0. You know, the brains behind the camera and I put this thing together last year during COVID and we want to share it with you. But let's, let's go over the tools very quickly. There's only about a half a dozen of them. And then I'll cut away to that excerpt and I'll explain to you right on the drawing board in the studio where and how to use them. So I know there is a lot of uh, computer literate viewers of this, of this episode. And for that, I could turn you towards the little uh, downloadable type of uh, landscape design tools that are online where you can do it on a computer. I'll tell you right offhand, uh, I did computer aided landscape design for the last almost a dozen years of my career, and it is good and it's very accurate. However, however, um, it does not work for me all the time as far as generating that creative side of my brain. I have always been and was always taught to have paper and a pencil in my hand and doodle. And the way I used to do it is I used to create three doodled drafts of a client's yard. I would just sketch it out back at the back at the office and then I would take it and sketch another version and then I would sketch another version and I'd put them on the drawing board and I'd go okay I could take some of this one that one and that one then I would compare it to the photos that I'd taken at the site and in what the customer had told me and I could see that blend would work very well I might suggest that for you unless time is a super obstacle why not take an hour and do some doodling you know learn about pencil and paper again and ruler and that kind of stuff okay so here comes the the five simple tools less than thirty dollars max you know and if you have family and friends that maybe have these things borrow them and it won't cost you anything i think most everybody can scrounge up a couple of number two pencils not too bad right the next thing is is a three-sided engineer ruler Take a look at this one right here. That's really gonna be important because we're gonna talk about scaling your yard down to fit on a piece of paper. The next thing I want you to find is a simple barrel landscape template. Barrel is B-E-R-O-L. It's a very simple piece, simple template that you can buy online or you can go down to Office Max or Staples or something like that. They generally have them on one aisle. Hey, here's another expensive one. How about an eraser? You know, I know you got some on the top of the on the top of the pencils, but get a, yeah, get a gum eraser, preferably the white ones because they don't leave so many marks, but get an eraser. And finally guys, um, an 11 by 17 legal pad. And if you really wanna go out, get a clipboard to put it on. That'll be the easiest way to carry it around the yard and put down some rough sketches that I'm gonna teach you. So for right now, let's go and take a look at some options that are right on the drawing board that I did from that Homescape 1.0 and take a look at that. I'll be right back right after that. Okay, a little tutorial on really simplistic design tools for the indoors, not the outdoors. We already talked about the tools that we can use out there and measuring your yard and stuff. Here we're gonna talk about how to take those implements 
and using these guys turn it into a landscape sketch and your finished landscape design. So I wanted to go over these. Now these are all easily available. Uh, you could find these on Amazon or you can find them at uh, Staples or any office supply house, something like that. They'll generally have them. I know these all came from Staples and several years ago. So I know they're there the last time I was there. But let's go over a couple of them. And I want to start off more than anything with the landscape template. This is, uh, this is a very simple little tool. It has straight edges to draw straight lines. It has quarter inch scale, which we'll go over here in just a second. And it's got its very little icons there that you can draw in as you're doing your design, showing, and then later labeling what each one of those little icons represent in the way of a, way of a plant. There's other things that you can use too. You, you have parts that do fences. You have parts that can do containers, hedges, uh, vine hedges, palm trees. It's a really simplistic little tool that uh, this one here, <laughs> believe it or not, this one's from 1998 and they're still exactly the same. They're put out by the Barrel, B-E-R-O-L, Rapid Design. So that's where you can find that. And along with that is the, I also use this, uh, the circles template quite a bit. These are for the larger trees and such. And if you have a massive design, then you can get yourself a compass and you can do much larger if you're doing it to scale. But that's what I use the circles for. And you can see that, you know, with this being a quarter, quarter inch scale, so you got a six foot bush and then versus a 15 foot tree. So these are really easy to use and, you know, just use them to your scale. And the way you can do it is you can literally take your quarter inch scale, put it across there, and there you got a 12 footer, 12 foot diameter tree, bush, whatever, okay? So it's pretty easy to keep. So those two little templates, that's really all you need for this sketch you guys are gonna do. Now, for going away from just straight lines and straight right angle type of yards, this little tool, again available at Amazon or, or uh, Staples or Office Supply House or wherever, it's just a really flexible, wonderful tool in order to create curves in the yard. And this can be the patio, it could be the lawn area, it could be the bed line, you can do all kinds of stuff. And if you have an existing yard, you can kind of match on your design using this tool compared to what you have out there. And hopefully uh, with existing yards, you're not having to do a massive unless you're doing just a total makeover down to dirt and starting all over again then this will maybe if you decide to have wandering bed lines and stuff and wandering bed lines are kind of easy to mow uh, if you have lawn next to them so this is cool this is put out by the the Staedtler company uh, s-t-a-e-d-t-e-r and you can find that online as well very very easy to use tool i've used it hundreds and hundreds of times to be able to make out the bed lines that I think would look nice for a client's yard and my own yard not too long ago at Wheat Patch Ranch. All right, uh, mechanical drawing tool, pencil. What do you think about a pencil? Um, this one is an adjustable one and it comes, with, it comes with refill lead and it's just loosened up like that. And there's a sharpener that comes with it that you can put in and keep sharp. Uh, a sharp pencil is really, really nice for finer work when you're getting into other stuff. But if you're doing the plot plan, like your house layout, your fence, your back fence, your driveway, your street, sometimes it's nice to let it go dull a little bit so you have a nice thick line uh, for those parts of the design uh, that really stand out. And then when you get into writing, you can sharpen it down and, and write a little finer so uh, adjustable this one is Staedtler just like just like our uh, curve tool there and you can find these at the same stores that I just mentioned now the real focus on this and when we're talking about scale I really want to impress upon you that unless you're on acreage literally you're trying to design acreage uh, you're probably not going to get too much bigger if you're on a rural 
uh, development type of backyard or front yard project, you're probably gonna be staying somewhere on around quarter inch, eighth inch, maybe three sixteenths, but I doubt it. Um, but what I wanna talk about scale is everyone recognizes the typical, the typical ruler, okay? The one inch ruler with quarter, half inch, three quarter inch, et cetera. Well, now we're gonna turn that over and now a quarter inch, a quarter inch is gonna equal a foot. Uh, there's various scales. You can have an inch equals a foot, an inch and a half equals a foot. But in this case, we're gonna talk about quarter inch and eighth inch scale. So instead of the typical ruler being one inch equals a foot, so that right there would be 12 feet, we're going to go quarter inch, and all of a sudden that whole 12 foot is now collapsed down to that depth. And that allows you to use something useful with a reasonable size piece of paper, and when you put it down and you start drawing, you will use from the quarter inch, you're gonna go from right to left, and if you were doing eighth inch scale, you'd be going from left to right. And you'll see the numbers when you get this engineer ruler, uh, you'll see the numbers on there, and it comes around pretty quick. If you just take a minute to look at it, uh, zero starts over here, and then as we go to the left, you'll see the numbers that are just slightly below on quarter inch scale, slightly below the eighth inch numbers, and you'll go zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on, all the way over to 46 feet. So now with a 12 inch ruler, you are able to draw 46 feet to scale. And then later on, when you're placing your plants and your elements and stuff, your quarter inch scale can be transferred onto there. And suddenly, you know, you have a, a two foot wide bush or a five foot wide bush. See where I'm going with this? So your scale is something that is uh, easy to use. And most backyards, residential development backyards are anywhere from 50 feet across on the smaller ones to 75 to 80 feet across. So when you're drawing that out, you're gonna be using that quarter inch scale, putting it down there, marking a line at zero, then marking a line out to 80 feet across, and there's your scale or your back fence. And you can be bringing your fence lines down to whatever distance those are, 46, 80, 90 feet, whatever it might be. If you're doing just the, the backyard, then you're gonna measure from your back fence area, and you're gonna start drawing in your, which I'll go into in a few minutes in the, in the module, start drawing in your, your house layout. And that's how we take a yard and put it on a piece of paper, okay? Engineer ruler, almost a must have. These guys right here are kind of a must have to do this. And then you can have a, a good, good eraser, one that doesn't leave marks and stuff on there. Um, and then right angles and T squares, but you're really not gonna need to get into that kind of stuff. Um, that's not necessary at the, the point that we're doing it. We're gonna keep it as simple as possible. If you want to, uh, if you want to use Keep your, your, keep your design nice and clean from eraser and that kind of stuff. Then later on, as you get finished, if you want to get fancy, you can use colored pencils to shade everything in, uh, highlight lights, you know, and you can highlight uh, irrigation lines and other stuff. You can use colored pencils. There's some folks that like the old Sharpies. Sharpies can be used. So I hope this kind of gives you a rudimentary uh, up to speed type of stuff as far as what the tools of the trade are when you're sitting down to design your yard and you have an accumulation here of, I don't know, maybe $25, not, not too bad. And then you can let family and friends use it after you're done. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you those tools before we go into the module. And so now you know what I'm talking about when you see them there. So thanks for joining me at the table. And let's get to module number three. So that's it. 
what'd you think? I kind of slowed it down quite a bit there in the studio, huh? and I hope I gave you a complete and thorough explanation of those tools. You did see a couple extra ones, like the flexible, the flexible ruler and that kind of stuff for making curves and angles and that kind of stuff. I use that thing probably more than the straight ruler in my entire career. I use that curved ruler to really make it out. The brand name on that, if I didn't say it in the video, is Statler. I think it's S-T-A-E-D-T-L-E-R, Statler. And I think about all of that, all of that, if you bought it all brand new, it's gotta be less than $30. So, you know, you're off and running and your landscape design career as a homeowner is underway. Now, one last thing I suggest you get is if you want to use 11 by 17 paper, the one that you're using for your sketch of your yard initially, I would suggest you go out and get a couple of large format pieces of paper. They're generally called architectural D sheets or 24 by 36 sheets. Check those out. You can get those at places like Staples and things like that too. Okay, off and running on your 11 by 17 sheet of paper, whether it's just the paper pad or the paper and the clipboard, we're gonna go out into the project area. Maybe that's the backyard, maybe it's the front yard, it doesn't matter. And I want you to stand looking out to the largest area of your project area. Maybe that's a back against your kitchen window and you're looking out in the backyard towards your back fence. Or maybe you're standing out on your sidewalk looking at your front yard. Whichever way you look at it, that's where I want you to start. And you can take that paper in your hand and you can start looking. Let's say for instance, it's your backyard. We'll just use that hypothetically. And you're gonna stand there at your slider or your kitchen window or your master bedroom slider or whatever you have and you're looking out into this area. So if you look out to the corners, you're gonna see a back fence. Usually you have a back fence. If not, you have the back of your project area. There's two initial measurements I want you to take the distance across and the distance from the wall of your house to that fence or project boundary. Do that right now. Now, with those two measurements, you have these measure measurements of your project area. Maybe it's fence lines again, maybe it's just a, a distance along the side of the house. And you're gonna measure from one corner down this side one corner down that side to wherever it needs to end, okay? Then I want you to go to that outer boundary we initially measured. You're gonna turn around and face your house. Then on that paper, you've already drawn it out, okay? So if I took it this way, you have your initial back boundary, you have your side boundary. Now you're gonna go up here to this boundary and you're gonna look back towards the house. I can turn it on a flat plane if you want. Backyard towards the house. And there, what I want you to do is just sketch the ins and the outs of the back of the house and where it corners and goes down your side yard. You don't need to put a measurement to that just yet. Just try to accurately draw it. It doesn't even have to be to scale because here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna now approach your house and with a tape measure or a roll of tape like we talked about is you are going to measure each section. Maybe you've got a 12 foot section or more, maybe 14 across the master bedroom and then it dips in a little bit and then it goes down eight feet. Then maybe it comes out and goes across the kitchen and the dining room slider and then makes an elbow. Some of them are really more complicated than that. Each section there, you're gonna match it to the one that you've done on the paper and just write in that number everywhere you go. And now, even though it may not be to scale yet, the measurements that you've taken, that, that back area measurement, the side area measurements, the distance from your side boundaries, may they be fences or something else, to the side of your house is accurate. Usually in residential areas, it's about six, sometimes eight feet, usually not that wide anymore, but maybe six feet on either side, okay? and then all those measurements of the back of your house. And there you've got your original rough sketch plot plan. But before we're finished with that, what I want you to do is find out if you have any power on the back of your house, where is it at and locate it on your sketch. Do you have any water on the back of your house? Locate it. If you're in an existing yard, do you already have sprinklers and sprinkler valves, timers and whatnot 
already there. We may be changing them up, right? But maybe they're still functional. And where are they at? Do you have a shed in the backyard you're keeping? Do you have a dog run that's already there? Whatever existing stuff you've decided to keep, we're gonna kind of place that and sketch it in, okay? So with that, you probably spent, what? Maybe a half hour at the most that you have taped off these measurements. Remember the, remember the most important ones, which ones were they? Okay, standing at your house, looking at your back fence, that measurement across, and then the measurement down the, the either side, and then the measurements of the house dwelling itself. Those are your biggies right there, okay? Now, if it's an existing yard again, maybe you have a patio, maybe you have walkways you're gonna keep, maybe those need to go in as well. If you have a brand new yard, blank canvas, we'll work on that later. So, let's go back inside. We'll sit down at the kitchen table, or in the home office, or whatever, and here's something I want you to consider, because that design does not go together until you answer to yourself and your significant others about four questions, okay? Number one, number one, what kind of budget are we putting towards this project? Are we putting $80,000 towards it, or are we putting $8,000 towards it? That has to be determined right up front and being honest with everybody involved. If you don't have that, you don't move forward. With that budget is going to encompass another really important facet of landscape design. And that is, what are your needs of the landscape? And what are your wants? Your needs are the imperatives. Your wants are the options. Going back to what? The budget, right? Lastly, something really on your sketch, just determine which direction is north. Which direction is north so it can be oriented, not just for you, but more importantly, if you take your, your landscape design and you go seek out some advice from a professional. Say you go to a nursery and you say, hey, I'm gonna landscape this, I'm not really big and knowledgeable on plants, here is my sketch that I've done, and this is the south side of my yard, indicated by the, the little arrow that you've put on your sketch that points north. Okay, and north usually, guys, is always up. In the landscape design world, it's usually always up. Another element of landscape design that I want you to completely understand, and that is scale. Scale is gonna be really important because the measurements that you just took out in the project area, you are gonna come back into. And on that three-sided, three-sided engineer rule, we're gonna find the scale that is most appropriate to cover the entire landscape project. It may be 3 8 scale if it's not very big. It may be half inch scale if it's really small. It may be 1 8 1 quarter, whatever it is. I want you to familiarize yourself with the three-sided engineer ruler completely and determine just by looking at the numbers on that engineer ruler which is best for you. I'll give you a little uh, pro tip. If you are on a residential landscape, uh, a development, a new yard, you know, those yards are shrinking all the time. They're not very big anymore. What used to be, you know, 150 feet deep and 100 feet wide is now somewhere around 50 to 65 and 75 to 100 at best. And that's in the front. Sometimes it tapers going to the back but you're gonna look at your scale and most of the time for those yards, you're looking at about quarter inch scale for size, for convenience, for your landscape green barrel template, they're all quarter inch scale. And when I say on the template, those plants, those icons that are on the template are quarter inch scale. So a full grown six foot wide plant, a two foot wide plant, whatever, it kind of makes it a little easier. And then if you have a bigger yard you're doing, then convert that quarter inch scale template and just double it. Instead of a six foot plant on a quarter inch scale, make it eighth inch and now you got a 12 foot wide tree. Something that you understand? Okay, so now we've got the budget out of the way, the wants and needs out of the way. We've taken a few minutes, like I explained in the video about the scale. And then we've also had the compass direction placed on our sketch we're ready to put pencil to paper. So now it's time for transference. You're gonna take those 
measurements that you did out in the yard and put it on the legal pad, we're going to take those measurements and correctly place them on your larger format paper. So the backyard measurement across the back, let's say it was 65 feet. Now find your quarter inch scale on your engineer ruler and look, and I believe it's going to be quarter inch will be on your left side going this way, eighth inch will be on this side going that way. And you follow that number over, the quarter inch numbers, until you find, I think it goes up to 45 if I'm not mistaken, and then you can add on another 20 feet. So if we have a 65 foot fence line, you can place in a straight line 45 feet, slide your ruler over, put another 20 feet in, and now you've just taken 65 feet and you've put it at quarter inch scale on your paper. Why don't you try that right now? Now that you got that down, let's do the measurements down the side, back towards the house area, whatever you're encompassing your project area. Put in those numbers, okay? Then, from that initial line, that initial back fence line, remember the distance from your house to your fence line? I want you to measure from that back fence line to your house in scale and make just a little mark. Make a little mark. Let's say it's 40 feet. I don't, I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 40 feet. So you just make a little mark in the center of that 65 foot length, okay? And that's where your house is basically gonna sit. And then you take the measurements that you did for your house structure. You come in six feet from either side on the side yard areas and then mark your corner. Mark your corner in relation to that 40 foot distance. 40 feet, corner, corner. Now start drawing the back of your house, if that's how we're doing it. Or the front of your house, wherever your project area is. Draw that in, 14 feet, in two, over eight, up two, over 22, whatever it might be. And you're doing it all off of that quarter inch scale. Now, if you took your time, you probably did it right the first freaking time and congratulations. Most of the time, people don't. So I hope you got more than one piece of paper or flip that bitch over and we'll start it again, okay? It's not a big deal. Don't expect to be perfect the first time. Don't be coach, okay? Coach is always that impatient bastard that always wanted to do something right the first time, and it took a lot of decades for me to finally grow the hell up. So, if you didn't do it right the first time, just do it again. It's only pencil. And if you want to, go to the original and erase it. It's your design. It's not a professional design that you're submitting to a customer and expecting hundreds or thousands of dollars to be paid to you with all the eraser marks and all that other stuff. No. It's going to be a DIY project, and when you're all done and you've erased everything and cleaned it all up as nice as you can, take it down to Staples and copy the finished product, and that's the one you can go take to the nursery or when the concrete guy comes over and measures out the patio and off the design and verifies you know, distances and that kind of stuff. Be as accurate as possible, but you don't have to be perfect. This is not an architectural drawing. This is a conceptual landscape design. Architectural is building a house. Conceptual design is building a landscape. And you can always have that small, dinky little amount of fudge factor when it comes to a DIY design. So don't freak out. So once you have those rough measurements, your fence and boundary area of the project, your back of your house area for the project, those are all in, and you're pretty darn confident that you got the scale correct. Now, new yard homeowners, how big a patio do you guys decide on? Don't go designing a 30 by 30 patio if you're only going to have a budget of $8,000. That's ludicrous. You will run out of money on your patio. So we have to do everything within budget. You can generally figure on a simple concrete patio with a broom finish and a few cold joints in it is going to run you, I'm going to go with Northern California costs, somewhere between seven and a half to a stamped up to 15 and $16 a square foot. And that's if there's not a lot of prep work to do. Okay, so kind of judge that just a little bit. Don't go putting in 12,000 square feet of sod in your monster backyard 
with an $8,000 budget because you've got irrigation you got to do or farm out. You've got grading, soil amending, and all the things that go with it. We're budgeting around your design and vice versa, your design around your budget. I can remember going to lots of clients' houses and I would tell them straight up, I just met them. And within 15 minutes, I'm saying, do you guys have a rough estimate on what kind of budget you're gonna throw at this project? All of a sudden, everybody smiles and everything disappear. And all of a sudden, their cards that they're holding way out here and telling me their life story and all their wants and needs suddenly come up right here. What do you mean? You gonna talk about money now? Well, what do you want me to design? Do you want me to design a $80,000 landscape? Or do you want me to design something that's within your budget? You haven't shared with me anything. So I would generally break the ice a little more by saying a range, a guesstimated low end and a guesstimated high end. That's how I generally got around it. And it generally worked 95% of the time. Okay, so we have existing walkways that are put in to scale. If you have an existing yard, we have drawn in some new patios or new walkways or new elements that you want within your budget if you're a new homeowner. And now we basically have a workable plat plan that we can start to really conceivably see. We can see it. You've gone out and you've taken it, your backyard and brought it in on your table now, and it's in front of you. You've discussed with your significant other. You know what the budget is, what your needs are, and what your wants are. And when you talk about needs, it's generally minor greenscape at the minimum, an outdoor living area, a durable surface to get from point A to point B, and some other accessory element like doggo run, kids play area, vegetable garden, water feature, something along those lines, okay? Now you need to figure out where might be a good place for those elements. Get your needs done. Now, if you have the budget, do your wants. Okay, plant time. Now's the time to figure out what kind of plants. If you've done some Google images, some Pinterest, some uh, talking with the neighbors, talking with family and friends, you're now ready to either make a decision on your own or take that bad boy, roll it up, and hit Starbucks on the way to the nursery next Saturday. And when you get there, find somebody who's knowledgeable, who has a good ornamental horticultural experience behind them, and maybe has some landscape design behind them. If they don't, ask for a referral to somebody at another nursery. Then you're gonna to wanna to find your plants. Take the time to look at plants, look at those tags, and really educate yourself in one four-hour session. If you did find a professional, let them guide you based on what you've shown them on paper and they've given you some suggestions. Then go back, do some more due diligence about the plant material and verify what the pro told you, okay? Then you can start plugging them in using that barrel template. You're gonna want the bigger stuff in the back, the smaller stuff in the front. You're gonna have irrigation ready to go in places that's easy and accessible, a power source if you need a timer outside. If you're deciding on doing lighting, you're gonna want a transformer near the same area, and you're gonna to wanna to have those things somewhat outdoor rated. Most of the time, all transformers are outdoor rated and outdoor irrigation timers. Don't get an indoor and put it outdoor because you need that rubber seal on the door. Wherever you're gonna put it, that's where you're gonna draw it. And then start putting in your plants. Here's a pro tip for you. When you come to planning time, you come to planning time, if you've got your little list, I'm gonna have 12 of these and six of those and two of those and four of these, and, and you take and go get them, understand that 95% of all retailers, as long as you don't damage the plant, when you take them home and you place them, if there's something you don't like, don't stick it in the damn ground, just place them out there in their containers, and if there's an obvious flaw, take that flaw and return it and get something that will work. Really simple, very, very simple. If you get stuff at box stores, hell, they take them back a year later if you screwed up or if you planted it wrong and it died or it just wasn't a healthy plant in the beginning. Okay, little pro tip on you there. The one thing I wanna leave with you is by the time you're taking that design and using it to get estimates, say from a uh, shade structure builder, contractor guy, or a concrete finisher, or the plants, 
you have in your hands and on paper exactly what you have in your head. And you could probably talk about your landscape project more than anybody else because you've created it. You've done it yourself and you've been able to manufacture this roadmap on paper that's gonna make your job as a DIY landscape homeowner so much easier. I can't tell you. A couple of initial things that I wanna leave you with as far as landscape design. If you have eight foot walls, four foot beds. If you have six foot fences, minimum three foot beds, okay? Very important concept. Remember to stay within your budget, guys. Remember to satisfy your needs before your wants. And always keep in mind the future. If you're gonna be there in this house for five years or less, don't go gonzo, okay? If you're gonna be there forever and you can't afford everything right away, design it in and stage stuff, infrastructure for those elements later. Maybe it's gonna be a lighting system. Maybe you need to put a back plug near the middle of the back fence because someday you want a nice water feature back there, etc. Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me coach. I hope you got something out of this video today. Do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, share it with some family and friends, and any questions you have, make sure you refer to the email at the bottom in the description. I appreciate your time. I hope you stuck with me. You can't give this stuff any less time and still come away with an education, okay? All right, hey, I'll catch you next week, every Friday in the middle of the day. Don't forget to check out the podcast too on all major podcast carriers. I'm Matt, you can call me coach. I'll see you next week, you take care.